How has your perspective on JavaScript changed over the years? Well, it's a lot like having kids. You know, <laughs> your, your, your kid is born and you go, oh my God, this is the most amazing child ever. But you have no idea really how they're going to turn out as they grow up. And you're always surprised and delighted by the way they unfold. In a lot of ways, the early technologies that O'Reilly spots and cares about are like our kids. And it's wonderful the way they surprise you. You know, we knew very early on that JavaScript was important. You know, we published a book on it within a year of it being released. We, uh, we saw that book really take off. And we were sort of puzzled. Uh, over the years that it didn't get more attention because it was so clearly one of the great open source success stories, but it wasn't sort of put into the open source canon in the way that it should have been. And it got kind of, in its sort of teenage years, all of a sudden, you know, with Ajax, it was like, oh, JavaScript's important, but people still didn't take it fully seriously. And now, as it's reaching, you know, programming language adulthood, it's like, oh my God, you know, it's everything we thought this kid could grow up to be. So how do you see it evolving over the next couple of years or so? Well, um, you know, clearly it's one of the most vibrant communities out there with all kinds of interesting frameworks. Uh, it's going in new directions, uh, you know, uh, Internet of Things, mobile, uh, you know, obviously, you know, going from the client to the server side. Uh, you know, I, I think, you know, and, and it's sort of becoming the teaching language, you know, with all kinds of startups uh, using it at, you know, as the way, you know, learning startups as the way to teach programming. So I, I think it's just going to continue to uh, develop in unexpected ways, just like, uh, you know, that wonderful kid who you always knew was going to change the world uh, <laughs> and then turns out to actually do so. Sure. sure. You know, you, you kind of knew it, but you're still surprised. Right. Now, what's your view of HTML5? I mean, where does that fit into the landscape? Well, you know, it's really one of the really big questions today, uh, or, or big divides between native apps for, you know, for the Apple world and their mobile world, and HTML5 as uh, the format that bridges everything else. I, I think uh, it's going. I mean, actually, Apple obviously still supports HTML5 too, but. I, I think it's a very, very powerful notion that was really implicit in HTML plus JavaScript from the beginning. It really is the maturation of an idea uh, that you know was there from the beginning. That some you know that HTML wasn't just a static thing; it was actually uh, a, a container for active content, and therefore you know you need a programming language. So you know HTML5. Uh, means that content and programming are, you know, are really indistinguishable from each other. Hmm. And I, I love that. I've always thought, you know, what well, is programming after all? It's just speech with computers. Sure. You know, it, it, it's telling, you know, it's giving instructions to, to this sort of dumb, you know, uh, uh, machine. The machines are getting smarter, and therefore the language uh, becomes, e you know, you have to be less and less uh, uh, specific. Uh, I, I, I just think uh, there's a really fascinating divide there. I will put out one caution, though, and that is that the HTML model still assumes that the, you know, the, the dominant mode of human-computer interaction is through a display. Hmm. And I think that uh, you know, there are a lot of areas where you know, display uh, you know, can be overemphasized. You know, the, a, a good example of this is think about the Google Autonomous Vehicle and versus Google Maps. Mm -hmm. You know, at some point, you don't actually need to show sure. the map anymore. Right. You just say, take me to Joe's house, yeah. and display is no longer the interface. Right. And, uh, you know, again, maybe you have a display that shows you where you're, you're going, but it's kind of like, that little annoying screen in the back of a New York City taxi cab, it's not necessary. <laughs> and I think that's a, uh, something that you know, programmers will need to be sensitive to, and that uh, you know, we're going to need a whole lot of, 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 of shifts as we have new affordances for new kinds of interfaces than the familiar you know, keyboard mouse screen 
you know, or you know, multi-touch. It's still a screen and some kind of you know hand kind of thing. Even you know, kind of the hand way, the the, the coolest new you know uh, gestural interfaces. They're still all visual, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we've always had more than just visual senses. Right. And I, I think it's really important to explore other modalities with which we can interact with computers. And it'll be interesting to see how JavaScript and HTML5 adapt to that world. Sure, sure. And, and maybe that you know they don't because you don't, you can't have a Swiss Army knife for everything. You may may need uh, specialized kinds of tools there. Uh, but I really expect computing to become more and more in, literally into the woodwork mm -hmm. uh, over the next decade. And uh, I think there'll be some fundamental changes in, in the, the UI paradigms. Uh, and you know, HTML5 you know, may be the culmination of a, of a paradigm which will go on for a long time, but there'll be new areas of exploration that go beyond it. Well, thanks yeah. so much for being with us. Appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, you're very welcome.